All right, so let's get into some multiplication. Not factoring yet, because before we get to factoring, you need to understand why it is we want to factor, why it is we need to factor. And one of the important things that I want you to kind of realize is when you have a product that is providing you with the area of a rectangle. So when I say three times four, hopefully you know the answer is 12, right? But if you look at this, if you take those three and four and you use them as like a length and a width of a rectangle, 12 represents the area of that rectangle. This is gonna be very important because when we're given a number, right? And remember, we want to factor it. What we're trying to do is take that number and rewrite it as an expression, right? As a product of an expression. So what that means is when we multiply, we get the area. But when we are factoring, what we're technically doing, we're given the area of a rectangle, we're trying to find the sides of that rectangle. Now, when you have 34 times 43, this is not something that I learned when I was in elementary school, but I think it is something very, very important. And especially for even like my daughter and understanding the number sense of how to multiply, you know, two digit numbers. I had an algorithm and we just followed it and I didn't really understand why we're using the algorithm or how it worked. I still remember it because it was ingrained in me, but I think it's really important. If we use this concept of to multiply is to find the area, then what we can do is kind of visualize, well, how can I break this up? 34 times 43, I have no idea what that is. However, by breaking this down into a 30 plus four times a 40 plus three, I can get a better understanding of how to represent this multiplication. And actually, I need to rewrite this. Okay, so now what's, what we're gonna do is rather than just use the number 34 on one side and 43 on the other side, that's not gonna be really helpful. But what if I did 30 over here and 40 over here. Those are kind of big numbers, so we'll leave that there. Then I have 30 plus four, and then I have 40 plus three. Okay, now obviously you can use, a, you don't really need the plus, we're just, I'm showing you that that's how that's broken down. Now what I can do is rather than trying to find the area of one big number and kind of using that algorithm, I can break this down. I can find the individual areas of each of these rectangles and then add them all together to get my product. 30 times 40 is going to be 120, 30 times three is going to be a 90, 40 times four is going to be 160, and four times three is going to be a 12. So now if I wanna find the area of multiplication on this, I can do a 120 plus 90 plus 160 plus 12. So let's go ahead and do this, 120 plus 90. And again, doing math in your head is gonna be so important for factoring. That's why we're going through some of these examples. I need you to build up this strong foundation. 120 plus 90 is going to be 210, and I might make a mistake too, so be careful. It's gonna be a 210 plus 160 is gonna be a 370, and then 370 plus 12 is going to be a 382. All right, so now let's get into a little bit more abstractness, and that's gonna be answered. So what about when we have something we can't visualize, we can't see because we don't know what the value is? What about when we have like a variable x? Now again, you could use anything a, b, c, y, z, w, w is a good one. What do we do? Well, we're just gonna follow the same rules that we did with numbers and we're just gonna represent it. It's just gonna be a little more abstractness because we don't know how big x is. x could be a fraction, it could be one half, or it could be 10,000, right? But if I wanna find the area here of five times x, that is just going to be 5x, right? The product of your lengths times your width. Now over here, what about when we add some things to our variables? Well, again, kind of think about this. We have a five times an x plus one. Again, we can do just like we did over here. We can break this up. Let's find the rectangle or the area of this rectangle, five times x. We already know that's five x. Width of this angle, five times one. Well, that's just going to be a five, right? And hopefully you're familiar with the distributive property. Five times x plus one just equals a five x plus five, right? So I just want you to be able to visualize this in a terms of an area because yeah, once we start getting into variables, things kind of get a little bit confusing. Now what about an x minus one times x plus one? And again, I'm gonna use the same method for these two to kind of represent this. What I'm simply gonna do is break this up into four quarters. I'll just use one as x plus one on top and x minus one on the bottom. And again, using the idea that I did over here, x times x is going to be an x squared, x times one is going to be an x, x times negative x, a negative one is going to be a negative x, and negative one times one is going to be a negative one. Now, when you start to compute this area, over here there's nothing really we could do, right? Five x does not add combined with five. Here though, you can see we have a negative x and we have a positive x, right? And so what I want you to be able to see here is that those are gonna to combine to give you a zero x, which is just zero. So the final answer in this case is just going to be a x squared minus one. Now, if you've maybe watched some other videos online, you can also maybe see, that if we were to say like, here's one and one, and this would be x and then x, what we want you to see is when I take this x squared or x minus one, x plus one, so if you took like an x 
and you say minus one, you could take this box and rearrange it and you're gonna get the same, like if you take this and put it down there, you have the same area, right? So if I take this x squared minus one, you can see that it's going to give you that exact same area. So there's a much better illustration that they have on YouTube, but I thought it was nice enough to go ahead and include for in and on here. So, all right, that is number two. That is at least the visual understanding that we're gonna get here. I want to elaborate a little bit more on the distributive property into the next video. So therefore you'll be all set and ready for factoring.